Hey guys, this is Evan from Easy Origami, and today I'll be teaching you how to fold an origami roulette star. This is my original design, and it's perfect for the upcoming holidays. This model requires eight square sheets of paper. Each unit is folded from one square, and I recommend using four inch squares to fold the units. Using four inch squares will result in a star about six inches wide. I'm going to be using paper with color on one side and white on the other, just to make it a bit easier to follow along but I recommend trying out different color combinations for some really interesting results. And once you've prepared your paper, then you wanna start with your first square with the colored side up. And then we're going to fold in half vertically. So take this right edge and fold it over to the left edge. Align the corners and the edges, then make your crease, and then unfold. Then we're going to turn the paper over, and then we're going to fold in half diagonally. So take this bottom right corner and fold it up to the top left corner. Align the corners and the edges, then make your crease, and then unfold. And now we're going to align this right edge with the diagonal crease that we just made. So we're gonna start by pulling the right edge over to the left. Then we wanna start at the top right corner and work our way down and over to the left until the entire colored edge is aligned with that diagonal crease, just like this. And once the entire colored edge is aligned, then you can make your crease. And then we're going to rotate the paper 180 degrees and we're going to do the same exact thing. So once again, you wanna take this right edge and align it with that diagonal crease. So we're just gonna pull the right edge over to the left. And once the entire colored edge is aligned with that diagonal crease, then you can make your crease. And then we're going to turn the paper over from top to bottom. And now we're going to fold the entire model in half horizontally. So we wanna take this bottom edge and align it with this top edge. So we're just gonna lift up the bottom edge like this, and we're going to pull it up until it's aligned with the top edge. But as you're doing this, you also wanna make sure that the vertical crease on the top and the bottom layers are aligned as well. So just continue pulling up the bottom layer until it's completely aligned with the top edge. And once everything is aligned, then you can make your crease. And then you can unfold. Then we're going to rotate the paper 90 degrees and then we're going to fold along this existing horizontal crease. So we're gonna do that by lifting up the bottom half of the model, just like this. And as you're pulling it up, you'll notice that there's a trap layer of paper underneath. You just wanna release that colored layer so it lays on top of the model like this, and then you can flatten everything out. Then from here, we wanna lift up the paper. Then we wanna align this existing vertical mountain fold with this diagonal crease on the top right. And I find it easiest to do this by holding the paper on both sides of the model. Then from here, we wanna push in towards the center of the paper, and you'll see that the model actually becomes slightly three-dimensional. So as you push in towards the center of the model, you wanna continue directing that vertical mountain fold over to the right. So you wanna pull it over to the right like this, basically pivoting from that center point until this folded edge is aligned with this diagonal crease on top. And you'll notice at this point, the paper doesn't wanna lie flat, and that's because we need to do the same thing on the other side. So if you turn the model over, you again need to align this existing mountain fold with this diagonal crease on the top. So we're just gonna pull the paper over to the right. Once the layers are aligned on both sides, you'll see the paper will start to lie flat. And if you look at the model from the top, you'll notice it will also be symmetrical. So we just wanna lie the model back down and then we can flatten everything out. And you'll end up making two new creases in the center of the model. Once you've done that on both sides, your model should look like this. Then from here, we wanna unfold the crease that we just created by pulling apart on the left and right sides of the model. And then we're going to lift up the top colored layer of paper here. So we just wanna lift it up like this so that you can see the white layer of paper underneath. And I want you to notice this triangular arrangement of creases that I've marked here. We want this long crease to be a mountain fold and we want the other two creases to be valley folds. So you wanna start by pinching that long crease from the top just to make sure it's a mountain fold. The other two creases should already be valley folds, but you may want to slightly reinforce those as well. And now we're going to collapse along existing creases. So I suggest grabbing the paper on each side of that triangle, and then you simply want to push that long mountain fold over to the left as far as it goes. As you're doing this, you'll be collapsing along those two triangular valley folds, and then you'll start to see that the rest of the creases will fall into place. All of the other creases should already be in the correct orientation, so you can simply just flatten out the model and it should look like this. And then we're going to turn the model over, and then we're going to do the same exact thing. So we wanna start by separating the paper on the top colored layer, 
just like this, by pulling apart on the left and right sides. You'll be able to see the last crease that we created. And then from here, we want to lift up the top colored layer of paper. So we're just going to lift it up like this, and we're going to pull it all the way up until you can see that triangle inside. Again, we want to make sure that this long crease is a mountain fold, so we simply want to pinch that from the top to make sure it's in the correct orientation. So just pinch it like this. The two other creases should already be in the correct orientation, but you may need to reinforce those as well. Then from here, we simply want to collapse along existing creases. So I suggest grabbing the triangle from the left and right sides, and then you want to push that long mountain fold over to the left as far as it goes. In the process, you'll be collapsing along those other two triangular creases, and then you'll see that the model will start to collapse into place. You'll see it will just collapse along existing creases. Then you can flatten everything out, put the model down, and once you've done that on both sides, then your model should look like this. Then from here, we want to align this bottom left edge with this raw edge here. And we're going to do that by lifting up this colored flap from underneath and pulling it over to the left. Then we want to start at this point here where those two edges meet, and then we want to work our way up until both edges are completely aligned. So you're just going to fold it up like this. And once both edges are aligned, you'll notice that the model doesn't lie flat. You'll see the paper wants to make a new crease here, so we're just going to reinforce it. So you just want to work your way up from the bottom by reinforcing that crease. So you just want to make the crease as far as it goes, and you'll see it reaches a point where the crease doesn't go any further. Then you can just reinforce the crease that you just made, and then we need to make a new crease that extends from this point all the way over to this white corner here. So we're going to do that by folding down this top edge. I like to start at the left corner and work my way over to the right, because you want to make sure this layer comes to a nice point. So try your best to connect those two points with a crease, and then you can simply flatten it out on top. But again, you'll see the model doesn't lie flat. So what you want to do is put your finger in between these two bottom layers, and you want to push over to the right as far as they go. You'll see the paper wants to create a new crease here, so we're simply going to reinforce that from the top. So you just want to push that down until you make a mountain fold, and again you want to extend that crease as far as it goes. Then we want to push down on this white layer of paper here, so we're just going to push it down from the top like this. And as you're doing this, you want to flatten out this layer so that it aligns with this layer underneath. So just flatten everything out. Then you can reinforce all of the creases that you just made. And now we're going to align this corner with this point here where these creases and edges intersect. So we're going to do that by lifting up this flap of paper that we just created, and then we simply want to fold it over to the right. And we want to pull it over to the right until the top corner aligns with this intersection, and until the crease extends to this bottom point here. Once everything is aligned, then you can make your crease. And now we want to lift up this white triangle on the bottom, and we simply want to pull it up as far as it'll go. So you're just going to pull it up like this, and then you can make your crease once it doesn't want to go any further. So just make a sharp crease along that edge. And then all that's left is to create two angle bisectors. So we're going to start by folding over this white edge and aligning it with this colored edge here. And we're going to do that by lifting up the left edge and pulling it over to the right. Then we want to start at the top of the model and work our way down until the two edges are completely aligned. Once everything is aligned, then you can make a sharp crease through all layers, and then you can unfold. Then we're going to turn the model over, and we're going to do the same exact thing. So once again, we want to take this white edge and align it with this colored edge here. And we're going to do that by pulling this left edge over to the right. Then we want to start at the top and work our way down until both edges are completely aligned. Once everything is aligned, then you can make a sharp crease through all layers, and then you can unfold. Then you can turn the paper over, and this is one completed unit. Now you must fold seven more. Once you've folded all eight units, you're going to need two to start the assembly. Then look at one, and you'll notice it has a flap like this on each side. And we're going to use those flaps to lock the units together. So once again, you want to take your second unit, then we want to rotate it clockwise so that this left point is held straight up and down. We also want to slightly rotate the first unit, so we're going to rotate it counterclockwise so that this right point is held straight up and down. Then from here, we want to overlap both units so that this point on the first unit aligns with this point on the second unit. So we want to lift up both units, and while keeping the first unit on top, we basically want to overlap the units like this. Again, we want to make sure those two points align, so you want to make sure that they align at this top point here, as well as at the center of the model. And from here, you'll notice this colored flap on the first unit. 
and we simply want to mount and fold that behind while wrapping it around the second unit. So we're just going to reinforce this existing crease by folding that mount and fold behind. And while you're doing it, you again want to make sure you're wrapping it around the second unit. And that's going to lock the two units together. Once you've done that, then we're going to turn the model over. And we want to do the same thing on the back. And this time you'll notice this colored flap on the second unit. And we simply want to mount and fold it behind while wrapping it around the first unit. So we're simply going to reinforce an existing crease. And at the same time, you want to make sure that you're wrapping that flap around the first unit. So we're doing the same thing we did on the other side. Once you've done that, then you can turn the model over. And it should look like this. And now you can see that you've locked both units together. Then from here, we want to untuck this colored flap of paper on the second unit. So we just want to grab the top layer of paper and pull it out from inside, just like that. And then we want to tuck this flap from the second unit inside of this pocket on the first unit. So you simply want to tuck this corner inside, just like that. And this is what's going to create the pattern in the center of the model. From here, we want to slightly rotate the model so that the second unit is now held vertically. And then we're going to add a third unit the same way. So once again, we want to align this point on the third unit with this point on the second unit. So we're going to do that by lifting up all three units. Then while holding the first two units on top, we want to overlay both sets of units. So we're just going to put them together like this until the second and third units are aligned. You may need to slightly adjust them, but again, you want to make sure that the units align on the top as well as in the center of the model. And once again, you'll notice this colored flap here on the second unit, and we simply want to reinforce that existing mountain fold while wrapping the flap around the third unit. So we're just going to fold it behind like this, and that should lock the second and third units together. Then we're going to turn the model over, and you'll notice this colored flap on the third unit, and we're going to do the same exact thing. So we just want to reinforce that existing mountain fold while wrapping the flap around the second unit, just like we did on the other side. Once you've done that, then you can turn the model over. And then we just need to pull out this colored flap on the third unit. So we carefully want to pull the top layer of paper out from inside, just like this. And we can lay that down on top. Then we want to tuck this flap inside of the pocket on the second unit. So we just want to grab the corner and tuck it inside, just like this. Once you've done that, then you can slightly rotate the model. And then we're going to add the fourth unit the same way. Again, we want to align this point on the fourth unit with this point on the third unit. So we're going to do that by lifting up all the units. Then while keeping the first three units on top, we want to overlay both sets of units like this. Again, you want to make sure that the third and fourth units are aligned. So they should align at the top here, as well as in the center of the model. Then we want to mount and fold this colored flap on the third unit behind, again, while wrapping it around the fourth unit. So we just want to wrap it behind just like we did before. Then we're going to turn the model over and we're going to do the same exact thing. This time we're going to mount and fold the fourth unit's flap behind again while wrapping it around the third unit. So we're just going to wrap it around like this and then you can turn the model back over. Then again, we're going to untuck this colored layer on the fourth unit. So we're carefully going to pull the top layer out from inside and lay it down on top of the model. Then we want to tuck that flap inside of the pocket on the third unit. So we just want to tuck the corner inside, just like this. Then we're going to slightly rotate the model. And now you've connected four units. And from here, you just want to continue adding units the same way until you've reached the last one. And once you've assembled all eight units, then your origami roulette star is complete. I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial on how to fold my origami roulette star. Feel free to upload photos of your completed star to the YouTube gallery on my website to be featured here in my next video, or simply upload your photos to Instagram with the hashtag EasyOrigami to be featured here as well. Also, be sure to check out my website and Instagram to stay up to date with my latest work. I'll post the links in the video description below. And of course, subscribe to my channel and hit the notifications bell for more videos like this. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.